friend, it's Amber, and welcome back to my kitchen here at Dirty Skirt Farm. Today I'm going to make three freezer meals, but I'm meeting my friend for lunch in like 30, 45 minutes. So I'm gonna do as much as I can now, let it sit and cool while I'm away at lunch, and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna finish everything. So let me give you a quick rundown of everything we're gonna do, and then we're gonna get started in the next 30 minutes and then I'm gonna go and come back and we'll finish everything up. Okay, so today we are gonna make three freezer meals. We're gonna make a bunch of breakfast burritos. I'm gonna actually do a double batch. So I'm hoping to get 20, 24 breakfast burritos out of this, which will last us, I don't know, a month maybe if we're lucky. So a double batch of breakfast burritos. I'm going to make two freezer meals of baked ziti we love baked ziti. It's always a crowd pleaser. It's so easy to put together and so easy to reheat the day of and it's super filling. So even though summer's coming and it's a little heavy and maybe I wouldn't do like such a heavy pasta dish, it's just so delicious and how can you not want baked ziti? So two portions of baked ziti. And then the last thing we're going to do will take a little bit of time. We're going to do a bulgogi marinade. If I'm being honest, never heard of this. Never heard of this, but Andrew swears that it's delicious. So found a couple recipes, I'm gonna make one up, and we're gonna see how it goes. But to do that, we need to let the meat marinate and then cook it later. So need to figure out how to make that happen. But that is our plan for today. Uh, breakfast burritos, baked ziti, and the beef bulgogi. So, I'm gonna go get some ingredients, get some things working, and let's get cooking. Last night, to prepare for today, I went and got all of this meat out. So let me tell you what I have. This is four pounds of bacon. We're gonna cook all of the bacon today. I'm going to use two pounds in the breakfast burrito, and then I'm gonna keep two pounds in the freezer just for sandwiches or easy dinner. I also have two pounds of Italian sausage hot. We like everything hot in this house. I have two packages of breakfast sausage, also hot, of course, for breakfast burritos, and then five packages, five one pound packages of hamburger. In my research, the beef bulgogi is made with like super fancy, thinly cut beef. Well, I don't have that. I'm ordering half a cow soon, so we will have other options of beef in the future, but I have probably 50 or 75 pounds of hamburger in my freezer, and I need to get rid of it to bring in this half a cow. So we're just gonna make with what we have, and it's gonna be delicious, and it's gonna be fine. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the bacon in the oven because that's gonna take 20, 30 minutes itch or until I have to go to lunch. And then I'm going to get the, um, the sausage going for the baked ziti. My goal is to have all the baked ziti done before I go to lunch. I think I'll be able to do it, I don't know. So I'm gonna get the pasta on, the pasta water on the stove, uh, coming up to a boil, I'm gonna get the bacon in the oven and then I will start cooking the Italian sausage for baked ziti. So let's get going. So I have two super large baking sheets lined with foil and then lined with a cookie cooler rack. So this will ensure that the bacon lays on top and it cooks on both ways. And then I can save the bacon grease underneath to cook the sausage for the breakfast burritos. So we're using the whole buffalo here. So like I said, four pounds of bacon. I'm going to get this on the pan and we're gonna get it in the oven. Let me turn on the oven real fast. I'm gonna do 400. The way the 
that we like to cook bacon. I'm just gonna take half of this for each pan. These are super thick. We got this super um, big uh, package of bacon from Sam's Club. So the way that we like to do it is I take one, it's still a little bit frozen, it's okay. Just take one piece of bacon and then I twist it. So see how I'm twisting it? Let me come closer. So I twist it like this and I lay it on the pan twisted. That way all of this gets like crispy and delicious. So I'm gonna twist everything on the pan and then we're gonna cook it like that. If you've ever seen the recipe online for Snoop Dogg bacon, which is real good. It's like a brown sugar mix on top. Um, we always twist it like this because that gives us more surface area to put the brown sugar and the other delicious things. So I'm gonna get all the bacon on these pans. All the bacon is on the pan. I just put a lid on top of the pot of water to help it come up to a bubble faster. I'm gonna throw this in the oven and then we're gonna get started on the meat for the basic. I think it's okay that the oven isn't totally preheated. I'm gonna flip the bacon halfway through. So I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. So I'll just flip the bacon halfway through and then if we need more time, we can always add more time. So timer set, 20 minutes for the bacon. So now I'm going to get started on the meat for the baked ziti. Cut up a couple onions, garlic, obviously, and get started on all of four. I start cutting the onions. Let me get out my freezer bag. I keep all of my onion peel, garlic peel, used lemons, I don't even know, herbs, stems. I keep them in a bag in the freezer and then when I'm ready to make chicken stock, this is the seasoning that I use for chicken stock. So I just keep all of my kitchen scraps in this baggie. Nothing goes to waste. I can use the baggie for the chicken stock and then compost what is left. Let me turn on the stove. Add some olive oil. And then I'll just immediately put the onions in and we'll get those caramelizing. These onions are pretty small, but I think they'll be fine.
definitely not enough onion. I'm gonna get one more onion and add it to the pot. These onions are just going to start sweating. Still not boiling. Let's turn it up a little bit more. things out of the fridge that I know I'll need. I have two packages of ricotta and two packages of roasted tomatoes. These are homegrown, home roasted tomatoes from last year's garden that I need to use up. So I'm going to throw those in the pot also and it'll be super delicious, especially considering they're already roasted. and the water to come to a boil for the pasta. I have my very, very last jar of canned tomatoes from last year's garden. I'm gonna get this drained and get these tomatoes drained. They were frozen. The tomatoes always have a lot of liquid. I don't want my baked ziti to be too liquidy. I want it to be a little thicker. And I know the cheese will help, but I still want to prevent it as much as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these drained so that that is already done. I'm just gonna reuse the bowl that I was thawing things in. Let me get my chicken stock bag back in the freezer. It's almost full. I just press it down. Might be full. Get everything in there. chicken stock because this bag is full. Okay, the onions are starting to get some color, smelling delicious. I'm going to go ahead and put the sausage in. my hands. Just broken up. I'm cooking. Water is boiling. Salt and water. I'm going to use rigatoni. 
rigatoni pasta. I like how, how kind of chubby it is. So that's what we're going to use today. And that's what I have. Two boxes of pasta. use my same spatula to get that a quick stir. I want to cook this al dente because this is going to cook again in the oven on the day that I reheat it. So we're just going to check the box and see what that means. 13 to 15 minutes. I don't know about all that. I'm going to do 12, I'm going to do 12 minutes. Friend, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this meal done before I need to go meet my friend for lunch. It's okay. I'll just stop where I am because really once the, once all of this is cooked, it's just assembly, so it can totally cool. I was just hoping to have something accomplished before I went to lunch. Turn this back up. tomatoes draining. There's only three minutes left on the bacon before we flip it, so this is good timing. My last jar of tomatoes from last year. Tomatoes draining. And then my roasted tomatoes to supplement. Oh, these tomatoes are so pretty. Did you see like the orange oh, right here? That must have been, I think it was a Dr. Witchie's tomato. So good. Andrew did all of the seed starting this year, so I honestly don't if he planted any Dr. Witchies, but they are delicious tomatoes. They're super big and orange, so they're super pretty in the garden. Throw this away. Okay, so here is my tomatoes. It's just all going to drain that liquid, which will be great. And then this will be ready for me. I also have my cheese out, so I like to get everything all ready to go so it's just right here when it's time to assemble i'm going to move everything over because i want to show you how i flip the bacon my timer should be going off in uh one minute so let me get everything organized and then we're going to flip the bacon for maximum brownage Continue to drain over here. My friend just texted that she is headed this way for lunch. So I need to get as much done as I can. I probably have 10 minutes. This bacon is not done. I'm still gonna flip it. But oh it's starting to get brown. But I'll just know that when I get back from lunch. This needs to cook longer. Also 
also producing a lot of delicious grease for me, which I appreciate because that fat is going to be delicious flavor when we cook the breakfast sausage for the burritos. And I don't wanna waste that. We actually have a ton of bacon grease in our fridge, just in like little containers. So I don't need to save this. I wanna use it in the moment. Ooh, my kitchen's getting hot. We live in a super old farmhouse, probably 125, 150 year old farmhouse. And I'm not joking, when you step out of the kitchen, it's like a 10 degree temperature difference. So throw this back in the oven. I'm not even gonna set a timer because I'm just going to turn the oven off when it's time to leave to go meet my friend. And then I'll just know when I come back turn this back on. All right, let's check on everything over here. Sausage is coming along, not done. We like it crispy on the bottom. Well, it's not even cooked all the way through, but once it's cooked, we like it crispy. So I'm gonna let it just continue to crisp up. Pasta's cooking, sticking together a little bit. I know some people put like olive oil or something in their pasta. I just stir it. I'm gonna put so much cheese and tomatoes and delicious things in anyways that it's not gonna to stick together, but I know that some people do. The meat for the baked ziti is finished. So it's still up on high, but I want it to brown on the bottom. I want it to get as crispy and delicious and flavorful as possible. And I still have a couple more minutes on the pasta and I have two minutes before I need to go so I'm just gonna let this crisp up if I need to when I get back I'll just continue crisping this uh, which is fine but the meat is done I just went and found my super big bowl look how big this is huge I wonder how big it is I don't know I found this super big bowl and I'm going to drain the pasta and put it in here to cool while this continues to cook and then I'm ready to assemble. I'm gonna mix everything all in this big bowl and then plate it up onto the trays for the freezer. I might have to do this in two batches. Definitely gonna have to do this in two batches. My strainer isn't that big. see the steam that's how hot the pasta is pasta is done meat is almost done everything is turned off bacon still in the oven I'll just crisp that up when I get back I will be back in just a little bit after lunch with my friend and we'll put all this together okay I'm back from lunch so let's get going I already turned the oven back on so the bacon is going I've already been browning the sausage if you remember um, sausage was cooked. I just wanted it a little bit brown and the noodles are here ready to go and the tomatoes are draining. So I'm going to combine everything together, get it all mixed in. I got my cheese out and then I'm going to layer it up in the freezer dishes, get them cooling and get them in the freezer. So super excited to have one project done. Let's pull it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is Get my cheese in with the noodles because my um, my meat mixture is hot so it'll melt the cheese so I want to get the cheese in here so that it'll be nice and ooey gooey and melty can't get it open I'm gonna have to use a knife And 
two. These are both 15 ounce containers. It's just what I had in my freezer. One is whole milk, one is skim milk. Both the ricotta, it's gonna be great. I'm just gonna throw them both in. This is a freezer meal of use what you have. So I did not go to the store for any of these ingredients for all three recipes. I didn't go to the store. I'm only using ingredients that I had on hand in my pantry or in my freezer. And that is one way that I like to use up my food is by making meals. We consider ourselves a house of ingredients. So when you have ingredients, that's great because you can do whatever you want. But when it's time to eat, sometimes you just don't want a thousand ingredients. You want like dinner. So I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna put the ingredients into dinner and then I actually have food that's ready to go. So this is just a big bag of mozzarella. I'm gonna add cheese in layers and on the top, I'm just gonna do this much. I don't know, a little less than a cup just to get it some melty goodness in, in the mixture. Get my meat going. Oh yeah, nice and brown and delicious. Too hot for me to touch. Oh, it smells. So, so steamy and that's exactly what I wanted because it will start melting the cheese and making everything delicious. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. It's my bacon. Okay, oh, this is starting to look really good. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. So remember, they've been draining here. I had one jar, a quart size jar of homegrown, home canned whole tomatoes, and then two uh, quart bags of roasted tomatoes that were just in my freezer. So I'm gonna add all of that in here and get it worked around. Oftentimes when you see recipes for baked ziti, it wants you to use like sauce, marinara sauce or bread sauce, meat sauce. Well, I don't have that. It's not what I have in my pantry right now. So, like I said, I'm just gonna use what I have in my pantry right now. I know all of the ingredients are delicious. So let's put them together and make a super easy, convenient meal that I know I'm gonna love. This looks amazing. So I'm just gonna get everything all mixed up. Tomatoes were kind of stuck together in the colander. I'm getting everything all mixed. This is exactly why I don't have this big bowl because this would not have fit in my Dutch oven to mix it all together. I've also seen recipes where you can layer it, pasta, sauce, tomatoes, meat, cheese, blah, blah, blah. I don't wanna do all that. I would rather know that it's all mixed together and I'm getting a little bit in every bite. And this is the way to do that. Okay, we are all mixed. Let's get it packaged up. I'm gonna put my tomatoes in the sink, all this juice in the sink. I have, so here's all my pasta. I have my cheese out. I went to the garden and cut up the very little bit of basil that I have. Ugh. And I'm gonna add that in. I don't have that much basil because it's, what, early May? This is all I have. That's okay. Use what you have. Use the ingredients that you have. Basil will grow back. I have two foil containers that will just make my life way easier in the future. Two packages of pepper jack cheese. So I'm just going to get to layering. I'm gonna 
pour some of my mixture on this one. Try to not to make a mess. Push this together. I should get an apron because I'm getting stuff all over me. Pepper Jack cheese. We like a lot of cheese. Pepper Jack cheese on one. Here's another bag. Do you ever have multiple bags of cheese open in your fridge? Andrew hates it when that happens, but this is my life. Okay, now I'm going to put the rest of the pasta over top. Just split it between these two. here. Man, I'm messy. I'm going to turn off the oven. Oh, bacon is done. Spread this out. So we have layer of all of the noodley goodness, layer of pepper jack, layer of noodley goodness, another layer of pepper jack, then Parmesan. Don't have any fresh Parmesan in the house. So just use what I have. Again, use the ingredients that you already have. Don't feel like you have to go out and spend a million dollars on all new stuff. Use what you have. And just like that, two full meals of baked CD done, ready for the freezer. your food because I promise you won't remember <laughs> ask me how I know I also put the month and date on there ready for the freezer Woo, these are heavy two big ZDs ready to go before I get started on the next project, I'm gonna think about what that is. I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup, clean the island a little bit, clean the stove a little bit, and then get ready.
have burnt the bacon. It's pretty dark. Let me see if I can hold one and show you. Whew, it's hot. See how dark it is? I'm gonna wait for it to cool and then have a bite. If I burnt it, I might have to go to the store and buy some new bacon because I want bacon on my breakfast burritos, right? I'm gonna keep thinking. While I decide what I'm gonna do about the bacon, I'm going to get the meat for the breakfast burritos going so that can be working in the background while I'm doing a couple other things. New clean spatula for the breakfast sausage. I just rinsed out this pan. It's all pork, right? I can, I can reuse that pan. So I'm gonna let this go and not burn it, hopefully. I also have some Potatoes O'Brien. These are homemade Potatoes O'Brien that I made a while ago. Potatoes, onion, bell peppers. So I just made these, these have, again, been in my freezer. So once the meat is done, I'm going to get these crisp up on the stove also. And again, we'll put it all together, mix it together, make some breakfast burritos. <sighs> Getting hot, okay. Potatoes are reheated, rebrowned, and in the bowl. I'm gonna get started in my pan here with two dozen eggs. Normally, if I was gonna do just one round of breakfast burritos, I would do a dozen. So I'm gonna double it and do 24 eggs right here, same pot. Get my compost bowl ready and we'll just throw it right in there. four eggs in. I'm gonna go put this. I should move this to a smaller container. I'll do that in a little bit. Now, I'm just gonna do it now while this is cooking. Let's make this more manageable. Have one egg that doesn't fit in here. So instead of getting another container, we'll just put it in. Into the pot. Everybody else. Okay, get these eggs scrambled. The only seasoning that I've added so far is Slap Your Mama seasoning. If you've never heard of it, let me show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like here. There is a hot version, hot blend, but I'm just using the regular in this recipe. I added this to the potatoes. So the only thing that I'm gonna do for the eggs is salt and pepper, maybe some crushed red, and then the Bacon is its own flavor, and the hot Italian sauce is, is its own flavor. So I'm just gonna add salt and pepper to these eggs, and quite a lot because, you know, it's 25 eggs. I will taste test everything at the end before I wrap it up because that'll be the only time to know if, if it tastes good. So I can always re-season at the end, but I'm just gonna season for now just to get us started. My very wonderful husband just went to the store to get me more bacon because 
it's just, it's not even savable, which makes me sad because that was four pounds of bacon. Oh well. Oven is ready. So I preheated the oven. So as soon as Andrew gets back from the store, we can put the bacon right in. Eggs are coming along. Let's put the new bacon in the oven and set a timer. To set a timer for 15 minutes this time. So I have the oven at 375 for 15 minutes. Last time I did 425 for 20 minutes. So I'd rather flip it, check, flip it, check, then mess up more bacon. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit of the slap your mama seasoning here just to give it some extra oomph. This is a lot of eggs, but they're almost done. Eggs are done. Let's throw them in the bowl. I would want to get started on my final dish for the day, which is marinating the bulgogi beef. But I'm scared of the bacon now. So I want to completely finish this project of the breakfast burritos and then I'll start on something else because I don't want to multitask too much because that's when you run the risk of like messing something up. So I'll go ahead and mix all this together for now. Oh, it smells so good. I want every burrito, every bite of every burrito to have a little bit of everything. So I'm trying to break up the eggs, break up the sausage, break up the potatoes so that there's even distribution in everything. It smells really good. Other than the bacon, the only other thing I'm going to add are two cans of these mild green chilies. So last time I made breakfast burritos and tasted them, we ended up adding these mild green chilies at the end and it was so good. So I'm going to get those in here now, juice and all, just add everything. Gives it kind of a southwesty tangy flavor, not spicy at all, but so, so good. It's almost like a little like fresh kick also. And these little cans, I mean, they're little seven ounces, right? Look at it compared to the size of my hand. Um, they're like 89 cents or a dollar or something. So whenever, we are at the store we always buy multiple because they're just so good in everything and they're shelf stable so might as well have them at home oh now this smells even better just that little can can you see this look at all that breakfast burrito mix i'm gonna give it a taste and see if we need anything else. I do have another can of chilies. I don't want to use it because what if I need it another time, right? Um, let's see. Try to get a little bit of everything in one bite. Oh. 
I'm good. I'm real good. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs salt. It's not spicy, but it's flavorful. The bacon's gonna make it even more flavorful. I'm gonna add that other can of chilies though. Because, can you have enough? I don't know, probably not. try this great news bacon is done and not burnt so we are going to get it cut up into the mixture taste the mixture one more time it's had a few minutes to sit and get to know each other and become even more delicious but I just want to taste it one more time Still hot I'm just going to cut up into little pieces like I said earlier about all of the other ingredients the eggs the potatoes the peppers and onions from the potatoes O'Brien everything the goal is that every bite of every burrito have a little bit of everything so I'm gonna try to cut this bacon as thin as I can it's super hot so I'm gonna have to use the tongs hold it, but I can always go back over it with my knife. I'm gonna cut, cut, cut. Oh, it smells so good. You know, I'm actually not a big, big fan of bacon, if you can believe that. I feel like I'm the only person in the world who is indifferent to bacon. Um, like if we were gonna go out to a restaurant, I would never order bacon. I mean, I want like a bite of your bacon, but I wouldn't order bacon. I don't love it that much. I don't put it on my sandwiches or anything like that, but sometimes having just a little bite in your breakfast burrito is really nice, but all of the other people in my house really, really love bacon. So happy to make it for them. Okay. Bacon is all cut up, throw it in. Even all the crispy bits. It's probably the best part, those crispy bits. And I've got my big bowl. I'm gonna mix it up. Oh, I wanna add some cheese to this. We all really love pepper jack, but the good thing about mozzarella so that's a good melting cheese. So I'm just gonna add a handful, you know, cup, a little less than a cup, add a handful of mozzarella. And I'm gonna do the whole bag of pepper jack. So this whole eight ounce bag here, pepper jack. Hands are slippery from the bacon. So I'm going to add that cheese. And again, then when you go to reheat it in the microwave for like a minute, all the cheese is already in there and it's going to be gooey and melty and delicious. Oh, it smells really, really good. That cheese in there is going to make it amazing. Taste test, where's my fork? A little bit of everything. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So, let's make an assembly line. So I've got all my ingredients. I'm gonna get a measuring cup. I'll probably do half cup. 
heaping half cup scoop for each burrito. And these are burrito tortillas. Oh, there's only eight? Hopefully we get more than eight out of these. That's not gonna be enough. We have some others, just in case. Well, you know, I've never made my own tortillas. Have you? Leave a comment and let me know because I want to make my own tortillas, especially since it's what, flour and water? But I've never done it. Okay. So, grab a tortilla. Try not to let them stick. Spoonful. Yeah, that's about perfect. This is a half cup. So what I like to do is pull all of the ingredients out to the side and then roll it up. That way, this looks a little small. Maybe I'll do a heaping. That way, every bite gets a little bit. Let's try again. side and then roll it up. Yeah, that's better. Once these are all rolled up, I will wrap them in uh, plastic wrap and then I will wrap them in foil for the freezer. So when you are ready to eat, you just take the foil off and you can reheat it right there in the plastic wrap, which is great if you are on the go, because it kind of serves as a little container for you. Had to break out the other bag of tortillas, which are falling apart, but we'll make it work. Might not be pretty, but it will be delicious. And it's all the same. I think what I'm gonna do is try to get one more. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll be able to get two. Two more burritos. Well, maybe that's just about right. These other tortillas are larger, so I'm able to add a little more. I did it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 breakfast burritos done, ready. I'm going to get them all wrapped up and then I'm going to put them back in the plastic bags that they came in to protect them a little bit in the freezer. So I'm going to do plastic wrap, foil, and then the bag that they came in. Hey babe, do you want me to leave a breakfast burrito out for you for dinner? Two. One or two?
that's a lot of breakfast burritos. I'm just gonna put them back in this resealable tortilla bag. Let's see how I can fit it in here and still be able to seal it. big bags of breakfast burritos for the fridge. The final thing we're going to make today is the bulgogi beef. So again, I've never even heard of this, but I looked up a couple of recipes and I decided I'm going to five times it. Hope this is not a bad idea because it's a lot of meat. It's not good, but I found a marinade. Apparently, it needs to marinate, so it's 6 o'clock right now, and I'm hot. So I think I'm going to let it marinate overnight, and then I will cook it tomorrow, and then I will package it tomorrow. So I'm going to undo all five of these packages in here, and then in a blender, I'm going to mix one and three-fourths cup soy sauce, one cup of brown sugar, three-fourths cup of rice wine, two and a half onions, minced garlic, minced, five tablespoons minced garlic, five tablespoons minced ginger, and five pears. So I'm gonna get that all blended up, marinating on the meat, and then I'm gonna put this in the fridge overnight, and I'm gonna cook it again tomorrow. to make sure that the blender is situated and turns on before I put all my stuff in it because the way that this blender works is that if it's not all configured correctly at the base even if there's stuff in it it won't turn on so blender works I'm gonna get all my ingredients The blender is a little full. Maybe I should get an apron. So I'm just going to use my knife. A little bit and then I will get my hands in here and really mix it all and I'll let the knife do some work for me it smells good it smells Asian I looked up 
what this is supposed to taste like because I did a taste test because I don't know if I'm supposed to add more salt or something and the good people online say that it's supposed to be a little sweet which it is and tangy I guess it's tangy okay we are all mixed up so I'm gonna wash my hands put some plastic wrap on this and throw this in the fridge and then I will cook it tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and end here friend. I'm exhausted. It's 6 27 p.m. So I'm going to go ahead get this in the fridge marinating get my kitchen cleaned up and then jamming time. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.